Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to conduct or how to do factor analysis with Python. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, when we are dealing with factor analysis, we're not going to get all into all the, the nitty gritty of the actual statistics behind it. But to keep it as simple as possible, when you are conducting or doing a factor analysis with some data, you are trying to take many variables and condense them and compress them into fewer variables. It's a, the term is dimension, dimensionality reduction technique. You're trying to reduce the number of variables. It's similar to segmentation where you're trying to clump together, you know, maybe people you collect data from, but factor analysis is more for testing theoretical con ideals, theoretical constructs and psychometrics. Whereas when you're dealing with segmentation, you're focused on trying to find out how, trying to divide people into particular groups based on what they might have in common in terms of their of the mean and the centroid with factor analysis you're focused much more on trying to find variables that have similar covariance if you will if that's too technical for you that's about as simple as i could probably make it in you know less than one minute so what we're going to do here is we're going to take a data set called biochemist this is from the pi data set whoops excuse me biochemist right here and we are going to make a two-factor model. In other words, we're going to take many variables, about five, and we're going to, using statistical analysis, combine them into a two, two factors instead of five. We're going to reduce it by a little bit. And again, this is just for demonstration purposes. That's, that's our goal here. So the modules we're going to use, you can see them right here. We're going to be importing stuff from Pandas and a Pi dataset. SK learn decomposition factor analysis, the star of this video. And we're going to do a visualization with matplotlib. So why don't we go ahead and see what we can learn here? <clears throat> so first we need to prepare our data, obviously. So let me walk you through these lines of code right here. In line number one, we're just calling our data set biochemist. That's it. Line number two is unique to the video. It may not be something you do all the time, but my end goal here is to make a visualization. <clears throat> not just to separate the, or not just to make the, the two different factors. So for visualization purposes, I didn't want my sample size to be much bigger than 250 because after that point, the plot got really sloppy and it was hard to see things. Again, you probably will not do that in the field in the real world. Um, so that's what's happening in line two. And so then in line three, I am separating out the variables that I'm actually going to use for my factor analysis. You can see there's only four of them. So this is not a, a heavy, complicated study. You really want to use factor analysis when you have like, you know, dozens, hundreds of variables or whatever, and you want to try to reduce them. But we're just practicing here, so that's why we did that. And of course, in line four, we're going to call the final product. All right, so this is what we got. And so you can see here, there's five variables. Notice how in the middle we got, uh, you know, got their gender, whether they're female or male, and also um, their marital status, single or married. Now, factor analysis can only handle continuous variables. So this is why in line three, I made another data set called X, where you can see that uh, female and marital status are, are removed. That is why I did that. And so if you look at X right here, you can see down here that the two categorical variables are now gone. And that's what we need. If you want to know the details behind these different variables, I put the info, I have the information right here. You could just use a, just type in data, biochemist, uh, uh, comma, and then show underscore doc equals true, and you can learn the details behind these variables. All right, now we're going to actually make our model develop, our model, if you will. Now this is kind of considered unsupervised learning in that there's no dependent variable. We're just trying to reduce the number of, you know, variables that we have so that we can, you know, uh, do further analysis. So a lot of times factor analysis might be to confirm, you know, different social or excuse me, constructs you might be creating for additional analysis, like for making uh, scales, if you will. Again, this is more going into psychometrics. And um, also it's for, and by doing that, you are able to, of course, uh, continue with more advanced anal uh, analysis. So let's say you have like 200 variables. That might be too much processing power for your computer. So if you can reduce it down to 15 while still keeping most of the variance, you're able to do much more complicated analysis 
while I'm keeping most of the original uh, information in, in the data. So let me go ahead and show this to you. Oops, that's the wrong one. Let me go ahead and show this to you. So in this first line, we're going to tell, we're telling Python how many components we want to make or how many factors, if you will. So you can make as many as you want. And uh, basically, you know, the final interpretation is up to you. How much of the variance do you want to explain? Is basically what's going to govern how many components that you're going to use or how many factors you're going to want. So I don't have that many variables to begin with, so I'm only going to pick two. So in other words, uh, I'm only going to have two components or two factors when I'm done. And another reason that I'm going to only do two factors is because I want to be able to plot this. And so each, each, um, each factor or each component, whichever word you like to use, that is one dimension on a graph. So if I go beyond two, I will not be able to graph it in a two-dimensional space. Now, in line number two, we actually fit our model here. So we take our, our, our two-factor here, this C guy right here, and we fit it to transform X. And so that's what we're doing here. Remember, transform X is all of our variables that were continuous. And then in line three, I just print out what I have. So I run this. And so you can see here that I have these numbers here. So after the transformation, which again, the statistics is kind of complicated, we have these numbers that is basically capturing the four variables in these two variables or these two factors, if you will. And so each one of these rows of data represents one of the data points in my actual data set. So there's 250 of these uh, rows, if you will, and each one of these is like the address for that particular row or that particular you know, input based on the statistical transformation of factor analysis. Now, because the numbers mean nothing to us, we get to the fun part of the visualization. And this is where things get a little complicated uh, compared to what we've done so far. Now, the first thing I have to do is I have to make a dictionary, if you will. And so what I wanna do now is I wanna map everything that is single, I wanna map it to a zero. And everybody who is married, I wanna map them to a one. That is what's happening here. So you have your key value pair. Single is the key, zero is the value. Married is the key. Um, one is the value. And so when we finish with this, and we call this this uh, you know, dictionary, D-I-C-T for short, you can see there's not a whole lot to see there, but that's the output, <laughs> okay? Now we have to do something to help out the matplotlib scattering. And this is where it gets really technical, and we're kind of going beyond our goal of talking about factor analysis. So this took a long time to figure out because every once in a while, you know, they make adjustments to the Python language, and this is how it works now. So let's see if I can walk you through this. In line number one, what I'm doing is this. I am taking my dictionary that I just made, this dictionary, and I'm mapping it with the, the marriage variable from the original DF data set. That's what I'm doing. So what's happening now is that um, everybody who is uh, single, they're gonna be mapped as a zero, and everybody who is married is gonna be mapped as a one. But it gets more complicated. I have to set this argument here, D type, to np.int because it must be an integer. If it's not an integer, it will not work for the um, matplotlib coding that I'm going to use for my scatter plot. Now, to make you more confused, I have to set the colors. And so I'm making an argument called colors, and I'm making an array uh, that has yellow and purple. So what's going to happen here is that the single are going to be mapped as yellow, and the married are going to be mapped as purple. That's what's going to happen here in a second, but you're not going to see this yet. Right now in line three, I'm just gonna show you what was happening in line one. So everything here, these are all just zero, one, zero, one. Zero meaning they're single, one meaning they're married. That's it. And you can see the data type here is integer, int8. It has to be that. It will not work. I'm telling you from experience. Now, let's go to the final step. We just paste this right here. Now. We're making a scatter plot. This right here, this first piece, is our x values, okay? So what's happening here is that this is going to be the first column from the, the actual factor analysis. So what I'm telling here is like, take all the rows, that's why there's a colon, a colon here, and then only take the first column. Remember, uh, Python uses zero-based, uh, zero-index things, where zero is like number one. And then after the comma, these are, these are the y values, which what I'm saying is take all the rows, that's why there's a colon here, 
and then take the second column also called number one. And so after that, I have to use my C here. This is for the colors. And so I'm telling it to take the colors, the colors argument or the colors, um, excuse me, what do I call it? The colors object, which is way up here, which is yellow and purple. And it's going to be mapped by or determined by the values of Z and Z was way up here, the zeros and the ones. So what's happening is that I'm telling it in a very indirect, complicated way, in my opinion, that, hey, when it's a zero, map it as, I believe, a yellow, and when it's a one, map it as a purple. So if you didn't understand that, it's okay, but let's see if it works. All right. And so you can see right there that uh, we have the two mappings. Now, if your factor analysis is doing a good job, there should be a strong separation between or, or among whatever you're trying to separate. So here, we are trying to separate people based on you know, the various uh, the variables that we have. We're trying to separate them you know, by their marital status. And you can see here that the factor that we, the two factors we made are not doing a very good job of separating people based on the various uh, variables for the actual analysis, which are up here. So, you know, number of kids they have, their PhD status, their mental, their mental state or whatever, these are not a good way of separating people, whether they're married or not married. So we would have to do additional analysis. Maybe if we made the sample size bigger, it would improve. Maybe we need more variables. It doesn't, we don't know for sure. But the purpose here was not to make a, a beautiful, perfect theoretical model. Our real goal was just to learn how to actually conduct a factor analysis inside Python. And we have achieved that. So let me see if I can summarize what we talked about and finish this video. So in this particular video, what we learned was how to do, how to conduct a factor analysis using Python. And so we're using the biochemist or we use the biochemist data set, which is looking at, you know, students in graduate school. And we took the first 250 rows to just kind of play and learn how to do this. And so the important thing for you is you make sure that you understand the factor analysis function here, which is asking for the number of components. You know, um, when it comes to the number of components, it really depends on the situation. So you'll have to explore that on your own. And then after that, we had to use the fit transform function on the, our actual data we were going to use. And this is just the output of the factor analysis. And you can look up things like the, the amount of variance explained, et cetera, you know, on your own time. But we only did two factors because we only have four variables altogether. We wanted to do something very simple for this video. And so from there, we made our visualization. This was very complicated. It's, it's kind of outside the scope of the video. But we made our dictionary here. And then we mapped things to a variable we call Z. And we made another, another object or variable called colors, where we told it what colors we wanted to use. And then I just printed out Z here to show you what it does. Make sure it's an integer, otherwise you're gonna have a big headache. And after that, we just plotted it. And you can see the results right there. So I would like to thank you for watching this video and supporting the channel. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Thank you again for watching, and you take care.